Welcome to Goblin Town, or as the goblins like to call it, Goblin Town. This place is located in the heart of the Misty Mountains, and these disgusting creatures are only loyal to themselves and the Goblin King. But today, their loyalty will be tested. Goblin Town finds itself surrounded not by one enemy, but by multiple enemies. The great Witch King of Angmar has recently destroyed the Kingdom of Arnor, and now he searches for more pawns to join his army. So he sends two elite orc armies from the north, or you know what I mean, elite for orcs, to subjugate the goblins of Goblin Town. But the movement of giant armies do not go unnoticed. The dwarves and elves form a quick alliance to seize the opportunity to cleanse the lands of Middle-earth. They quickly form an army not only to kill the goblins of Goblin Town, but to kill the orcs of Angmar. But now there is only one more army to mention at the great siege of Goblin Town, an army so full of hate they do not fear defeat nor victory. It is the Great Warriors of Arnor. Hey guys, what's up? It's Pixelated Doll Paulo. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you guys are doing well. And we are back with more Third Age Total War. And this battle has it all. It's a siege battle with goblins, orcs, men, elves, dwarves, cave trolls, mangonels, everything that you could dream of for a battle. It's all right here. And this is a custom scenario made by Sin of the Dark Cloud. And he is using the sub mod, which him and Kuru Guru Chan, they've been working together really hard on. It's a sub mod for Third Age Total War, which is focused around multiplayer. So that mod comes out in about two months down below there's a link click on that link that will give you more information about the mod and when it's ready to download you can download it from that link now all the custom scenarios that you've been seeing me play you will be able to play them too with your friends on that mod so some very exciting stuff i'm so glad that someone is working on a multiplayer focused uh, mod for third age total war cannot wait for them to finish but for now we do have some sneak peek battles like this one and i'm really excited to show you this one so yes we are at goblin town and this one's going to play out very differently because there's a lot of different teams in this one and a lot of different armies here are here for different reasons so let me go ahead and just kind of show you the map here and we'll explain some of the rules so you have a good idea of what's going on so up here we have the kingdom of arnor this is just one player and the rules for Arnor is that they have to destroy the forces of Angmar. They have to stop the Witch King's forces because obviously the kingdom of Arnor, their their kingdom, their once great kingdom has been destroyed and this is what's left of their, uh, their great army. So now they're just doing everything they can to destroy the Witch King and that's really their only, uh, only way for them to win is destroying the Witch King's army. That doesn't necessarily make them allies with the goblins or the elves or dwarves. Uh, now, they could still potentially kill these goblins. I mean, they're disgusting goblins. I mean, I would kill them too if I was in that situation. But uh, strategically, I would try to avoid killing goblins so you can team up and take out the uh, forces of Angmar. Anyways, moving on, we have our next team here, which is defending the great goblin town, which, of course, are the disgusting goblins. Uh, now, they're fighting together. Uh, they're, not, <laughs> they're not exactly the greatest organized army, but they do have some powerful units in the mix like trolls and catapults and whatnot and of course they have the advantage of holding this strategic position and then moving on we've got more goodies over here so the dwarves and elves for them to win they have to uh, destroy all the orcs so they don't necessarily have to destroy uh, arnor but just kill all the orc filth you know cleanse the lands so yeah elves and dwarves fantastic it's great to see them working together and then finally but no, most certainly not least we have the forces of angmar and for them to win i'm pretty sure they have to just capture the city just kill everyone 
So uh, yeah, pretty simple there. The rules are not super complicated, it's just everyone's here for different reasons. So let's go ahead and look at the army comps. Now this battle is a little slow uh, at the beginning, so we have lots of time to, do, to just do normal speed and look at these army comps. So we'll start uh, in that same order. We'll start with the Kingdom of Arnor, commanded by Sin of the Dark Cloud. So his army is a pretty traditional uh, Arnorian army. He's got pikemen, he has the uh, Arnor men at arms, he's got some ballista, which is going to be very useful. He also has some Arnorian archers and more, um, actually he's got some uh, militia in the mix as well, more pikemen, and then way in the back, this is where he has uh, his elite units, like the heavy archers, he's got his uh, cavalry over here, like the Arnor knights and the knights of Anuminas. but back here he's got the battle ready Dunedain, and he has the dismounted knights of Arnor, which, or, yeah, dismounted, yeah, no, they're just called Dismounted Knights. Dismounted Dunedine Knights, excuse me. So yeah, that's pretty much his army. We'll move on now to the Disgusting Goblins of Goblin Town. One army is commanded by Cannon Fodder, and he has some heavy goblin archers mixed in with some cave trolls, some lesser infantry like goblin infantry. He also has some heavy goblin halberds. They are rushing to the, the choke points as we speak. Here are the catapults that, are, that I was talking about earlier. And, you know, just I'm just a basic goblin force. There's really not a lot of new units for this faction yet. So he's got the, uh, the main objective here of defending the inside of Goblin Town. We do have another army of uh, goblins commanded by, let's see, uh, Happy Meal. And his job is to defend the outskirts of Goblin Town. So a very similar army to his, uh, his allies army. Just a lot of heavy goblins goblin infantry catapults some trolls in the mix and uh, hopefully they can uh, defend their homes and survive this battle it's not looking great though I mean they're surrounded by a lot of enemies let's now move on to the elves which are commanded by Kuru Guru Chan and this is where we're gonna see some new factions now I don't think I've downloaded all the files correctly so some of these names are gonna be weird kind of like the elven fast swordsman like what kind of name is that but they look really cool and that's all that matters so yeah, Elven Fast Swordsman, and uh, he's bringing more swordsmen over here. He's also got some smiths. Here is his general, it's the Phalas Lords. And then back here, he has some Enladris Evil Slayers. <laughs> like what? <laughs> They've got red capes, uh, nice silver armor, it looks great. He also has the tra uh, traditional Elven units like the Eldar Enway Archers, very useful. He's also got the Mithlin Nobles. And he also has some pikemen, which I need to find here because the funny thing about the pikemen... Let me see, where are they? Where are they? There's some really cool dwarven units too, but uh, oh, there's somewhere... In, oh, here they are. Unlocalized placement text. So yeah, the names are not uh, loading properly, but I'm just going to call them elven pikemen if that you know makes things a little bit easier. Here's some more archers uh, in the back here. Let's move on to the dwarves which are commanded by Sam B and the dwarves man they've got so they have so many cool units like the blacklock engineers really cool really cool um Pommies crossbow type unit they've got horns on their helmets which looks great back here he's got the uh, mithril guard from Erebor such a cool cool unit i i can imagine that they're very tough to kill because they are wearing that mithril uh, armor there which is uh, nearly impossible to penetrate. So I hopefully these guys, unless they take like an arrow in the forehead or something, you know, through the opening of their helmets there, they should be all right. He's also got, you know, traditional dwarven units like the Volt Wardens, and he has uh, Axemen back here. Here's some Hammerers of Gundabad. That's an awesome name. And here is the Dwarven Nobles. He's got some Balin's Guard. That's awesome. Here's a Ballista Catapult. He also has um, some new units. Let's see, is he, is he? I think most of the Dwarven armies focused over here. He's got some like Fallen unit. They kind of look like Dwarven Spartans. I'm sure we'll see them uh, later on during the battle. Here's some crossbows and some warriors. We've seen them before. Where are the fallen soldiers? We'll see them. We'll see them. Don't worry, guys. Uh, you'll see here that there's a bit of a skirmish going on here. Uh, you saw that, or if you look here, there's some casualties. Not a lot going on. I swear, you didn't miss much. It's just a little tussle there. Uh, let's now move on to the final two players, the final alliance here. Uh, we have the Orcs of Gundabad, commanded by Paladin Bob. We also have a lot of new units in this army, so we're going to go a little bit slower here. Like these chanting bastards right here. Orcs of Gund... Or, I'm sorry, this is Sauron's Will. 
That's a pretty cool name. They're like priest warriors. They look devastating. They look nasty. Uh, back here, we've got... Check this unit out. The Black Uruks of of the mountains that is such a cool name so this is a very nasty the black the black orcs were always the the toughest orcs so it's a pretty elite infantry force i mean these this army is pretty elite i mean for you know for an orc army and then he's got this swordsman unit i'm not 100 percent sure how to pronounce this name but i think it's pronounced rudor swordsman uh this was a section of arnor you know before it broke apart before Arnor was destroyed and these guys kind of just pled their pledged their allegiance to uh, the witch king so they're 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 baddies now so yeah he's got some cool they've got some nice shields they look well equipped and then he's got some halberds in the mix uh, a lot of great uh, I think he's got some snow trolls now they're kind of mixing their armies here so I don't really know where one begins and where one ends but the other army is commanded by son of Imladris uh, he is bringing some witchers. It's a unit called witchers and they fire like fireballs of justice It's, it's gonna be fantastic. Here's also another new unit the witch realm marauders Look at that. It's so nice to see some like elite looking well armored units for the bad guys because uh you know, these orcs with just ragtag armor just doesn't look that great. Uh, but I think the battle's actually getting close to starting here. You can see that um, Paladin and Bob, he's firing his catapult, and we do have some arrows coming in. So yes, this is the start of the battle. So this is this is well time for my for uh, my part, my doing here. Uh, but yeah, anyways, in this tunnel, he's got his swordsman. So it looks like he's gonna be sending in the men first. We are having some camel ca camel camera issues. Excuse me. Uh, so yeah, he's gonna sit back, try to skirmish the enemy a little bit. If we head over to the other side, we can actually see the kingdom of Arnor is. Actually, look at this. He's he's got his archers and he's he's firing down at the goblins. Oh, that was a perfect hit right there, taking out at least 12 of those archers. So yeah, he's firing at the goblins. Let's go ahead and zoom in at the goblin point of view. So even though he doesn't have to kill these goblins, he's wasting his ammo. He's wasting men trying to kill these guys. I think this is kind of a mistake. Now Again, this is Sin of the Dark Cloud. He came up with this scenario, so I'm not going to say that he doesn't know what he's doing, but I think he should have focused all of his army on just killing the forces of Angmar, the, the Witch King's forces, instead of these goblins. But we'll see what happens. Maybe he just wants to get inside and use this defensively. I, don't, I mean, there's a lot of... This is why I love these modded maps. I love these custom scenarios, because there's just so much you can do on these maps it's it's pretty crazy pretty crazy all kinds of different strategies and stuff i mean the maps are just so large full of, they're they're full of different paths you can take uh but we now have the the catapult for the goblins firing down at arnor's position it's gonna be tricky but uh he's gonna focus his arrow fire down at this catapult crew you might want to think about using fire arrows to try to light these catapults on fire but uh, so far, he's getting a, a decent amount of kills without losing too much. I mean, these are the cheaper Arnorian archers. There goes another volley. Oh, look, at, here's the returning fire from the heavy goblin archers. That looks so cool. I love just seeing volleys from uh, from the archers. It looks great. And, I mean, this, this, whole, this whole town looks great. Oh, we got artillery hitting the uh, heavy goblin halberds. And now we have the forces of Angmar charging forward their, their uh, swordsmen here. So, oh, look at all those arrows. That is awesome. Blood splattering everywhere. So they're going to charge in, take on these goblins head first. They've got artillery support. There we go. There's that charge. Excellent. So the battle has begun, at least for the uh, the baddies, that is, in Arnor. I guess you can't really say Arnor's bad, but in this situation, they've just gone rogue. They, they, you know, they don't care about anything but themselves. Killing the Witch King. So the Halberds actually, you know, they need to get back into tight formation. This is not good. So you put them in loose formation, try to avoid that art, uh, artillery fire. He needs to try to get them back into tight formation because they're going to do a lot better job holding back the Swordsman unit. And uh, that's all they're sending in right here. Now, if we head over to the other side, because the reason this, this battle took so long to start up is because of the awkward positioning of the units, or I'm sorry, the armies, where they don't know where to commit. Because you can see here that the elves and dwarves, they can flank around over here, or, vi or vice versa, where the orcs can flank around this way. Uh, but it's mostly the dwarves watching the flank of the orcs, and then we have the elves over here, who are pushing at the outskirts of Goblin Town, 
So this is going to be the dedicated force that's going to take out these uh, goblins here that are defending the hill. And these goblins are ready. I mean, I know these are like peasant units, units compared to the dwarves and the elves, but they're in such good positioning that sh they should be able to rack up a good amount of kills. I mean, these archers, I mean, this is a good spot for these archers, a really good spot. So we'll head back over to uh, the major fighting parts of the battle so far. And trust me, guys, the ending of this battle is insane. I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say anymore. I don't wanna give it away, but the ending is just crazy. Oh, artillery firing, that was a really good hit. Now we have some trolls, snow trolls, joining the fight, knocking down their orcs, their orc allies as they run by. They don't really care too much about them. All they care about is, well, I guess making Sauron happy or the Witch King happy, I don't know. Maybe they want some good orc meat. I don't know what trolls do. I don't, I'm not gonna judge them. But yeah, yeah, they're charging into the front line. And they're, I think they're actually gonna break through the front line and go for the catapult. Now we have arrows coming in at the back lines of the, the goblins here. I know they're mostly, I mean, orcs and goblins, pretty much the same thing. But I'm just, I'm just gonna call the defenders goblins just to avoid confusion. But yeah, the goblins are focusing down arrow fire at the snow trolls, but the snow trolls are in the back lines. So that means they're getting a lot of friendly fire. Here comes some fire arrows. And the snow trolls, are they falling back or are they just focusing all the, yeah, they're focusing all their attention on these heavy goblin halberds. Oh, now we got the cave trolls of the goblins coming in. So we got a battle of titans right here. Trolls versus trolls. Arrow, fire arrows coming in, trying to light that catapult on fire. And we have more goblins marching into position, trying to fight for their homes. Honestly, they're the only ones here fighting for their homes. Fighting for the future of their people. So they've got more to fight for. They've got the morale, if you could, you know, if you could argue. I guess, I mean, goblins, they're, they're not very loyal to each other, I guess. I don't know. But the snow trolls, surprisingly enough, dying pretty quickly. The cave trolls really uh, turning the tide over here. And more and more goblins pushing for the center of this base. Uh, we do have some action going on over on this side where the elves, like I said, are just getting obliterated here. Uh, he's sending up his smiths. They're getting hit hard by arrows. I really hope that, that deadly elven armor, or I guess armor is not really deadly, but the, the well-made elven armor is what I'm trying to say. They're now charging forward. Hopefully it can protect them and they can get to the front lines taking out this goblin. God, look at those goblin arrows, just relentless coming into the front lines. That is that is awesome. I mean, there's so many cool battle scenes so far in this, this battle. Oh my god, these archers. This is a well-placed archer unit. This is what happens when you place archers in well-placed positions. You get kills. Uh, so he was setting up one unit there. It looks like he he's trying to, you know, not trying to clump up his forces so they all die to those goblin arrows. And I think he does, yeah, he does have some archers now trying to suppress the enemy, fire back, and silence his bows. So the elves are slowly making their way. Oh, there's a ditch over there. Don't fall down there. Uh, let's let's go back inside the city here. Let's see what Arnor's up to. I should probably just use the minimap here and just zoom around. All right, so Arnor is actually making a huge, oh, look at that. That was an awesome volley. They're making a huge push right here. They're now kind of working with the forces of Angmar to break through this goblin defense where he's mostly sending in his weaker units, which is, again, a smart idea. He's got his militia trying to cut down the heavy goblin archers, and then he has archer support back here, still focusing down the halberds. So, nice volley there. I'm gonna just sit back and watch these fire volleys here. This is awesome. Here we go. They take a while to, uh, to release their arrows, but it's worth it. Come on, fire. I mean, this map is so cool looking. I love it. There it goes. There it goes. Right into this blob of Arnorian archers. Oh, come on. Sorry, guys. That Whenever there's a... It gets a little buggy with the camera whenever you got these abstract maps here. Uh, but I think Arnor is going to have to send in more infantry to, break, to be able to break down these goblins. Oh, nice another uh, volley there from the goblin archers. So we can kind of zoom around goblin town. Head back this way, where the fight is still raging on over here. It's mostly the men, the evil men of Angmar's army. They're trying to cut down these halberds. They are doing a pretty good job, but there's a catapult close by. They need to get that catapult going if they're going to be able to survive this battle. Wait, what's going on down here? The cave trolls 
the cave trolls of the goblins charging out, trying to silence these. Oh, no friendly fire takes out one of his own cave trolls there. Uh, but the catapults are still... Wow, he's got... Where are all these cave trolls coming from? The snow trolls are trying to now protect the catapults uh, of Angmar. Well, that's another close shot there. Just zoom on in here. I love this tunnel that leads to death. It's fantastic. So they're trying to soften up these forces. Still, you know, supporting these men as they try to break through the uh, halberds. I'm glad that he got his halberds in tight formation. There goes another volley, and that is just, that is a kill zone right there. That is a perfect spot. Look at all the fire arrows coming down, the fiery balls of justice coming down, just crushing all these troops. And now we're going to see some elite troops join the front line. Oh, look at that. They got shields on their backs. They got two-handed swords, the black Uruks of the mountains. They're going to try to muscle their way through this defense. They're really grouping up, which, which is risky because of that catapult. But we're going to sit tight right here. I know there's a lot of stuff going on in this battle all at once. But I don't want to miss anything important here. Because this catapult, oh, it's so close to disaster here. Where they're breaking through the lines. They're breaking through the goblins. And this catapult is now very vulnerable to a frontal attack here. And that's exactly what's happening. They're actually, most of them are flanking over here. Where are they headed? I don't know. The goblin defense, though, has been crushed. They've broken through this main line mostly with men. Not orcs, but men. So they're, they're, they're being pretty wise with their army. Uh, if we head back over to No Man's Land, uh, you can see the dwarves and orcs, they're not really too focused on each other anymore. They're just kind of sitting there. This is like the Cold War. You know, they're just showing each other, hey, we got forces over here. We're ready to attack if we have to. But they're not really uh, doing anything yet. I think they're mostly focused on... Uh, oh, there's a, we just fell into the hole. I think they're mostly focused on taking out the city here. Oh, this is a, another cool looking uh, fight here where we have cave trolls trying to stop these elves. More goblins charging down this slope, holding back these very elite elven warriors. And of course, we have the arrow support here from the elves. And the goblins still trying to fire down at the elves as they continue to charge up more troops. Oh, we got Ballista Fire coming in now. I think he's trying to focus down these cave trolls. So we got fighting on multiple fronts. All right, here we go. Mithlin nobles making the great climb up the mountain to join their, their allies into this epic struggle. And the elves are struggling. I, I definitely think they're struggling. I mean, they've made some progress, but remember, these, these goblins are pretty trash. So they've lost a lot of good men to crappy men, be, mostly because of the arrows, the goblin arrows and the cave trolls. More artillery fire coming in. Just trying to snipe out the uh, the cave trolls there. The archer is still putting down the suppressing fire. So if we look at what's left here, the goblins, you can see, yeah, they, oh, wait, wait, wait. Is there, is there a battle going on? Oh, we got some cab charge. Okay, it's just a cab charge. Uh, I think he's just trying to soften up other parts of the defense. Oh, wait, no, he's actually trying to flank around. I don't know, that's a gutsy move there, but I don't think it's going to be that effective because there's really not that much... Well, he could get a decent charge off here, but he's... Oh, it's amazing how many arrows these elves can take. Finally, they're starting to drop. But yeah, they're trying to get behind the archers. I don't think it's really going to do much here. It might silence them for a couple volleys, but that's about it. Whoa, the mangonel! Why did he fire the mang... Oh, the mangonel! The explosions from the mangonel looks amazing. It looks like flamethrowers coming down. That's awesome. It's like a firework coming down. All right. Oh, look at these guys. We haven't seen them before. The unground goblins. Or underground goblins. I'm sorry. They look cool. Got some, like, crazy headgear there. Headgear. <laughs> so, yeah, they're charging forward. They're going to they're gonna try to cut down these, ar uh, not archers, but cavalry over here, the elves, who just will not die. All right, so now that we kind of know what's going on on the elven front, let's head over back to the Arnorian front, where it's still... Well, actually, Arnor is breaking through. 
he's cutting down these uh, these goblins here. Uh, we do have some cave trolls standing their ground, mixed in with some halberds, but it just looks like the goblins are crumbling to just all the external forces that are focusing down their their homeland. They just want to live there in their home. Uh, but yeah, not good, not good. So Arnor is now going to be able to uh, set up shop here, so to speak. He can now set up his forces without having to worry about the enemy right away. He can rest up his army and get ready for the secondary attack. But again, his main goal is killing the forces of Angmar. So, in the force of, Ang of Angmar, holy crap, this is awesome. They are doing pretty well. I just love the, uh, the walkways up here, just the makeshift goblin camp here. It looks great. So, uh, Goblin Town... If you don't know where Goblin Town is located, it's in the Misty Mountains. It's where, in The Hobbit, if you read the books or seen the movies, uh, where Gandalf and the Hobbits, they take a break, they, they try to get some sleep, and then they get basically kidnapped uh, from some goblins, and they drag them into Goblin Town, where there's the goblin... Ga oh my god, what is that? What is that? Okay, so we have another new unit for the goblins here. Oh my god, Uruk Bombers. Look how far they can throw. This is awesome. Okay, so the Uruk bombers, look how large it is. As soon as they release it, it's just giant pots of death coming down, trying to light the catapult on fire. And there has been so much loss of life over here. But to be honest, these are mostly orcs, and orc lives don't matter. I just got to get that in. I got to get that in every time there's orcs. I just got to do it. Uh, but yeah, the goblins are actually well. They're breaking here, but they're they're doing all right. They're holding them back. At least they're doing better compared to uh, uh, Arnor's situation. But that was cool. That was another new unit there. I love those little hidden surprises. Uh, let's head back over to the elven fight, where the elves are slowly but surely breaking down this defense. And there's a big reason why the goblins do not want to lose this area right here. I mean, it's a pretty obvious reason. It's the fact that, uh, well, okay, so, okay, what I was going to say is that they could lose, see how the goblins are charging down this way? Oh, ambush unit over here, that's cool. You see how they're invisible? That's cool. Anyways, uh, they're falling back over to the choke point, that's a smart idea. And they're also getting the mangonel back inside. So Happy Meal, he's falling back, he realizes that his ally is really struggling to contain uh, the the other choke points so they might have to fall back and go to the town center here which is right right here so they need to just put up a like a circular defense just group up whatever they have left and uh, hope that the uh, the enemies kill each other on the outer parts of goblin town but finally the uh, forces of angmar have broken through this goblin defense and they can now uh, both set up shop so to speak just rest up their army, get all of their army inside here. Uh, the dwarves have not, uh, well, they haven't really done anything. They're actually now moving forward. So I think I know what they're doing. I think they're going to try to surround these forces that are charging into Goblin Town. See how they're, they're mostly pushing in their troops now? So the dwarves are probably going to try to close in and surround them. We'll see what happens. We still have some elves located over here too, so... Anything can happen here. But the dwarves are moving out. Alright, so let's uh, let's head back over to the elven situation. Where the defenses are crumbling. Got uh, the un underground goblins. They're so... They're so underground, you know? They're so not mainstream. Oh man, have you heard of these goblins? They're underground. Oh man, look at these shiny elves. It's fantastic. Awesome elven army pushing forward, ready to take the great goblin town. Or it's not really great, but you know what I mean. Also, we have some dwarven iron uh, crossbows, or iron crossbows. They're firing down at the goblins, supporting their elven allies. All right, let's head back over uh, into Goblin Town, where we can see just chaos is is breaking through. Uh, just catapults setting up, trolls forming up, infantry reforming up, marching over all the uh, the conquered dead here. And then, of course, 
We have the Kingdom of Arnor, which, uh, where is the Kingdom of Arnor? Has he fallen back? Hold on. Hold on, I gotta locate. Where did his army go? I do not, okay, I'm moving the camera around a bit too much. I'm sorry, guys, there's a lot of stuff going on here. I have no idea. Okay, here's some knights. Oh, he's pushing for the center. Th wow, he is really just hauling ass over here. He's trying to take the center position. He's got pikes set up. And the reason he's doing this, because he does not want the forces of Angmar to conquer the uh, the city here of Goblin Town, because then he loses. Or he, he will be defeated, is what I meant to say. Uh, so he's got to stand his ground and uh, hold the center. And he might... Well, let's see. There's a lot of goblins here. Where are the goblins? <laughs> the goblins are gone. I think they're regrouping over on this side. So we're going to have just like... Think of the inside of Goblin Town as like a WWE like beatdown, but way more entertaining and feels more real. <laughs> no, it's going to be like an arena of just enemies of enemies. It's going to be insane. Oh, we do have a fight going on here. What are they? What exactly are they fighting? It looks like they're just killing a couple uh, black Uruks over here. There's one left here. Just will not give up. Now we have some wargs charging in. This is the forces of Angmar. Uh, not really sure what they're trying to accomplish here. Maybe try to get a good charge against... Well, there they go. Yeah, that's probably a smart move there. I mean, warg riders are not very good. I mean, warg riders are good for taking out archers, running down retreating troops. My goodness, look at this army. This is insane. So this is, this is it, guys. The great push. Uh, if we head back over here, the dwarves are now moving out, but it's too late. Most of the forces are funneling in. You can see he's got some troops staying in reserve, protecting the back flank here against the dwarves and elves. The elves have now pushed, and they are getting ready to uh, go inside what's left of Goblin Town. And the goblins, they're just looking. They're just looking at each other, like, "What do we do? Like, what? What do we do?" There's enemies everywhere. We're surrounded. We've lost most of our army. I guess we can just kind of hide in a corner and hopefully they all kill each other and then we can retake it. I don't know. It's a tragic, tragic situation. Okay, what's going on here? Orc archers. Uh, looks like they're having a bit of a skirmish against the Dunedine of Arnor. I love this unit. Looks fantastic. So he's getting ready to push up more infantry. We got catapult fire coming in now. Trying to take out the defending units of Arnor. Pikemen moving back. Falling back into position here. Alright, here we go, guys. Here we go. Two hated enemies. Just think about it, though. Think about where... If you were a warrior of, of Arnor and your home was destroyed by... The Witch King and the forces of Angmar. I mean, if you didn't have a home and you just wanted revenge, you would be so bloodthirsty in this situation. You'd be so ready to slaughter as many orcs as you possibly could. And by the way, this is a special unit here. I, Arthidine, Arthidine Men at Arms? I'm sure I slaughtered that name, but they do look really cool. The armor, it's subtly different. It's a little bit fancier. But here comes a charge from the Snow Trolls, breaking through the back lines automatically, silencing some of these archers. Got the Dunedine trying to hold them back. Here comes the horde of orcs now engaging the swordsmen who are on the lower tier of this defense. So these are the black orcs, the black Uruks. Now attacking the Dunedine, who I assume they've used up most of their ammo. And here comes more troops, more reinforcements to try to conquer the center of Goblin Town. And this is the epic conclusion, guys. Fantastic. The pikemen here standing their ground. This is a good spot for the pikemen. They should be able to take out these uh, these trolls fairly quickly. Uh, there's still some archers holding their ground, firing at the, uh, the orc position. Reload. Release. Alright, so here's the marauders here. The witch realm marauders. They're having no issue at all cutting down these men-at-arms. There's just so many of them. 
We got the battle ready Dunedain reinforcing this front line. And this right here is a fantastic fight. I love it. I love it. I'm so glad they got past the choke points because that can get a little boring after a while. And now it's pretty much a pitch battle within the homes of goblin or within within the home of a, of a well, goblin home whatever i'm trying to i can't words are hard today all right when are they not when are they not all right so let's zoom out here we can see uh the fight on a much bigger picture here where the forces of forces of arnor i mean there's just so much going on i don't know if they have it i think that's it i think this is it for their army uh they definitely don't have a lot they're going to have to rely on the elves over here or the goblins. I think the goblins should move in. But the goblins are, look at this, they're waiting for the elves to show up. So he's kind of, you know, the goblins, I think that's a pretty smart idea because he's, the goblins are just letting the forces of Angmar and Arnor slaughter each other. And then if he can kill enough of the goblins, then he can retake his home or kill enough of the elves. I'm sorry. Then the goblins can retake Goblin Town. All right, so the orcs are still pushing up, just sending in more and more. Ho oh, what is this? We got, yes, this is the witchers. Look at these guys. Look at these guys. All right, so they pretty much look like Nazgul or Nazgul, but uh, they're they're kind of like flamethrowers. The great beams of justice. Check this out, guys. Come on, do it again. Oh, come on, do it again. I guess it takes them a while to reload here. Come on, fire. Fire, come on. There it goes, there it goes. There's the officer. Fire! That is so cool. Look at that. Oh my god, that is awesome looking. That is just... Alright, well, sorry about that, guys. My game just decided to crash for no reason, but we are back. I don't exactly remember what I was talking about, but we are witnessing Arnor put up their last stand against the forces of Angmar, and I don't really think they're going to make it out alive. I think, uh... They're gonna fall just like their kingdom did to the to the wrath of the Witch King. And we even have a Manganel that is being pushed forward here. So maybe we're gonna see some explosive action come in. I'm not really sure. It seems like the forces of, uh, of Arnor, they are crumbling. You got a very large unit of pikemen. It's more than 60 men breaking they're now less than 60 because the men who are breaking are getting slaughtered by these black uruks but it's not a good sight it is yeah that's a massive break there from arnor and unfortunately for arnor this is the end of the road for them uh now if we head over to the other side we can see that there's some action going on here the orcs who are holding against the elves we got the imladris evil slayers that's such a goofy name uh they are now taking on the orcs here a uh, massive horde of orcs too. Uh, back here we do have some uh, archers. It looks like they had a little bit of a skirmish here. Most of them are... Uh, actually, I think they're out of, am uh, out of ammo. But yeah, most of them have been destroyed. Or killed. So the elves are now pushing. It looks like most of their forces though are actually pushing this way. They gotta try to prevent the kingdom or the forces of Angmar to uh, take that city. Look at that shield wall. Just completely stopping Arnor's forces there not really getting a good charge so we got the uh, Rudor swordsman now pushing through this little valleyway holding back the elves they realize that they got to stop them before the elves send up more reinforcements uh, let's see what do we got over here oh we got the uh, elven fast swordsman uh, taking on the witch well witch realm marauders we're actually doing a pretty good job chewing these guys up. We do have a couple of units in reserve over here. Ready to fill in the gaps whenever needed. And again, they're just trying to slow down the elven forces because they have conquered the town center. And you can see, you can hear the chanting Sauron's will units. Uh, definitely causing fear amongst the enemy. That's probably why Arnor broke so early like that. Uh, because of the the chanting Sauron will units it's such a, it's another strange name now we have the goblins now joining this uh, whatever is left of the goblins joining this fight trying to take out some of these uh these witch king forces 
but uh, it's gonna be oh there goes the mangonel firing oh it took out a bunch of black uruks of the mountains coming down uh, it took out a lot of forces uh, and we got more goblins actually joining the fight so the goblins trying to reclaim the town center before the uh, forces of uh forces of the witch king they don't want to bend the knee to the witch king they want to they want to live in their own little free society here But it just looks like today the Witch King will have his victory. We'll see. We got the Uruk Bombers pu uh, pushing forward. Can't wait to see these guys in action. Here we go. Come on. You would think this unit would be uh, for Isengard. Uh, maybe they just added them. Oh, another Mangonel fire or shot coming in. Here we go. Here comes the Bombers. <laughs> the Bombers. Oh, my God. Melting these soldiers, man. They do so much damage. And then we got the Mangonel from the other side coming down. This is a very fiery match indeed. All right, we also have fire arrows coming in. I think they're trying to light the Mangonel on fire. Yes, that's exactly what they're doing. So the Mangonel trying to quickly reload. Let's see. Come on, get another volley here. Fire. Wait, did it fire? I don't see it unless it's invisible. <laughs> oh, there it landed. I just want to see a big juicy hit. Like, oh, there we go. There's a, oh my god, just burnt a bunch of their own troops. That's the risky thing about mangonels. They are, uh, well, they're not very reliable. There goes another, uh, another shot crumbling down, burning all these troops. Uh, so yeah, you definitely risk a lot of friendly fire when using mangonels, but they're so worth it. They're so worth it. The closer you are to the enemy the much better it will be because it's more accurate, obviously. So I think uh, they need to try to get their mangonel a little bit closer. Uh, let's see what's going on on this side. Well, we have the elves breaking through. Uh, there's really no more front lines. The elves are just pushing towards that town center. Uh, looks like most of their fights here have been victorious. Let's head over to the other side. We had the dwarves pushing from this side. Uh, or no, 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 they're pushing from this side. I'm sorry getting lost in goblin town yes there we go we have the mithril guard trying to take out this catapult what do we have defending here we've got a small force from the forces of angmar and it's also gundabad just you know whatever I'm just, I'm just calling them angmar for role playing sake uh yeah but the dwarves are trying to muscle their way through here we also have some elven pikemen joining the front line as we speak Lots of arrows firing down at this position. This is a pretty solid defense from uh, the forces of, uh, forces of Angmar. So they might actually be able to hold on here for at least a decent amount of time. Remember, they're just trying to capture that town center. But I don't think they're going to be able to hold on against these dwarven, this elite dwarven force. What do we got over here? He's got more reserves. He's got a lot more troops just waiting to charge in. Right under this little walkway here. Let's head uh, let's head back over to this main defense here. Where things get, things are definitely getting a little confusing here, guys. I mean, there's just so many enemies of enemies that it's I mean, especially when it's orcs killing orcs, it can get really confusing. Up oh, here comes the elves, guys. They're attacking the back the back flank here of the goblins so the elves are just here to kill everyone they don't care they don't care whose home this is they just want to kill orcs oh we got mangonel going off in the background a beautiful fight so far i think this mangonel is firing down at the elven general look at that trying to snipe out the general oh, big rock there Hang on. There we go. Slice them up, Elven boys. Very nice. So now they've got another way to, to charge through. They're going to be able to charge through here and attack uh, the forces of Angmar. Who are just kind of holding this mound right here. Let's see, these archers, where are they firing at? We do have some forces flanking around. We got the uh, underground goblins coming in. And we've got Sauron's uh, will. <laughs> Sauron's will. Uh, that's a bizarre name. It's not that bizarre. It's just it's annoying to say Sauron's will. 
but they're pretty nasty, and they have a lot of uh, morale debuffs. Just I can tell, but just by the chanting. The underground goblins just trying to muscle their way through, just trying to cut down these defenders. I mean, the goblins are pretty much out of this battle just because they're just getting surrounded right now. And yep, here comes here comes the black Uruks of the mountains about to surround the elves who are already engaging some of the orc bodyguard of the, the goblins here. So we've got really the two armies that are left are uh, well, Arnor has been destroyed and the goblins have uh, pretty close to being destroyed. So it's going to be down to the Elves and Dwarves against the forces of Angmar. Two heavyweight champions going at it. <laughs> Alright, let's see uh, Let's see how the Dwarves are holding over here. They're actually... Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. It's just the lighting of this battle makes it a little bit more difficult. But we got more Black Orcs uh, joining the fight. Trying to hold back these Elven Pikemen. And the the sworded infantry here, the dwarves. I love that unit though; it looks so cool. And we have some orcs actually holding back some guards of Kazadoom, some Blacklock engineers. So the dwarven army is kind of all over the place at this point. Got a lot of elven support back here. A catapult moving forward. Very nice. And then we got the rest of the dwarves just kind of holding tight here. I think this is pretty smart. Oh, oh, the general, he's about to get, yep, just gutted. Gutted by an elven blade. Yeah, so the rest of the dwarves are just they're hiding from arros and stuff. Oh, there goes another general. Who, whose general is that? That looked like a human general. I don't know. I think it, I don't know. It might have been one of the goblin generals. I'm not too sure there. But two generals down within a couple of seconds from each other. And I love it. This reminds me of the Battle of the Five Armies. Seeing the dwarves and the elves fight together against disgusting orcs. Uh, but we have some orc archers holding tight here. Just buying more time. Orc bodyguard holding back some elves who are trying to make their way over to the dwarves to support them in their struggle. seen a lot of elves so far elves seem to be doing pretty good oh then we got the goblin still hanging on guys still hanging on happy meal with this pretty solid force here remember he had a lot of troops located over on this side uh, but I guess the elves were victorious here uh, unfortunately we did we did not see this entire fight but we are seeing a lot of goblins over here so they might have just ran away and focus their attention over here on trying to save their Manganel. Oh, we got more forces coming down this way. Look at this. Yes, we got more swordsmen coming down from the uh, the armies of Angmar. Just trying to support whatever front line. I mean, there really isn't that many front lines. It's just chaos. It's a mosh pit of death. Oh, what is this? Oh my god, goblins out of nowhere. Underground goblins. Flanking around, where did they come from? I don't know, probably underground, am I right? No, but they're flanking around Sauron's will. And they're going to protect the flank against these swordsmen. Wow, I thought the goblins were out. Oh, and then we got the fiery whatever beams of horror coming down. Are they breaking? No, they're winded though. They're tired. That's a deadly unit right there. Using their magic to cut down the enemy. So yeah, uh, what are they called? The Witchers? Such a cool unit. They're witches, man. Doing a lot of damage to these forces. Nice. Another good volley there, just repositioning. Oh, we got a duel up here. I love seeing duels in Medieval 2. We got an underground goblin taking on a swordsman here. While the, the beams of fire fire over them. Oh, oh, that was a cool... Look at that shot. That's an awesome shot right there. Man, I wish I could do more cinematic shots in this game. It would be awesome. That elven front line was so cool. Uh, now it's no longer a duel. <laughs> it is way outnumbered. So the goblins still trying to put some pressure on the enemy. Goblins are just killing anyone. 
Goblins still, still, they are still, still alive. <laughs> still, still alive. They're still alive over there. The elves have finally broken through to support their dwarven allies. The dwarven infantry taking a breather up on this hill. Look at them stand all over the, the conquered dead here. And the elves still stabby, stabby, pokey, pokey, trying to get through the forces of Angmar and get to that town center. Wow, who, who's, okay, so this is a way in favor of the, uh, the dwarves and elves. So if, if the goblins want to win this one, they got to work together with the forces of Angmar to defeat the elves because they are way in favor in this battle so far who knows they might actually do that they might team up together i mean that that's what i would try to do at this point if you have any chance of winning you might as well team up the two lesser factions team up against the stronger one i love the look at the models on these guys it's fantastic okay i definitely need a appear offline here i'm sorry for the friend request pop-ups here you guys are pretty much used to it. I, I never appear offline, but I should definitely do that. Is that a general? What is this? What is this? Yeah, that's a general. I guess that's an orc general. What in the world? Looks so goofy. Looks like 70s Hercules or something. <laughs> but he's just he's inching forward here trying to join the fight. The goblins are actually having some success here. The underground goblins are a tough unit. And they're taking out these orc halberds. General is definitely supporting them as well. Cannon fodder doing doing all right so far. All right, so things are kind of coming calming down over here. Uh, but most of the elven forces, let's see what's going on over here. More goblins. They're just coming out of the woodwork here. They're just coming out of everywhere. I mean, it makes sense though. I mean, this is their home. They got home field advantage. This, this thin line of unlocalized placement text. No, the, the elven pikemen. I love those blades too. Like how terrifying is that? Uh, they're doing all right. It's a thin line, but they're standing their ground. We also have some Mithlin nobles. It looks like in the mix, three three men of Mithlin nobles just holding back this goblin horde. All right, so I think most of the fighting takes place over here. Yep, this is most of it. The the dwarves and elves, they're continuing to push further and further into the defenses here. Here comes reinforcements. Sauron's will. They're really good at breaking morale. They're going to need a lot more. Here's more swordsmen coming in as well. This is going to be the epic conclusion of this battle here, guys. Oh, here comes more fire support. I think he's trying to snipe out those mangan elves. I'm not too sure. There's a lot. Uh-oh. Those poor elves, man. They were trained so well to fight, but they were not trained how to get around a mangan elf. And so they're lost, confused during the battle. How does this happen? Oh, uh, elves are so stupid. All right, so great fire support there. Those witches are just burning whatever is left of these dwarven elven forces. I'm kind of rooting for the forces of Angmar because they're they're kind of well the odds are against them. But more and more reinforcements coming in. Beautiful. Got to take out the uh, the elven pikemen here. They definitely need more. Uh, the elven archers trying to focus down these witches, or witchers, excuse me, right over the hillside, firing down, still trying to take out the mangonel. I don't know why, maybe they're trying to take out the forces, oh, there they go. They don't figure it out. They're going around the mangonel. So finally, they're moving around. Got the archer support, kind of, you know, giving them cover, I guess. Here comes the rest of the elven army finally figuring out how to get around that. That's that's wonderful. All 
Alright, let's see if there's any more uh, intense fighting going on. Any other strategic points. The dwarves are just kind of holding, protecting this flank. Just in case more reinforcements come down that way. Uh, goblins... <laughs> ama Wait, no. No way. Yeah, the goblins cannot beat these elves. Oh my goodness. The elves are just slaughtering these poor goblins. That's a very tragic sight indeed. I thought the goblins were going to win that one. Uh, but I think... Well, where are the goblins, man? Well, here they are. Here they are. They're still in the fight. They still got some some armies here. Some troops. They got to team up with the forces of Angmar. They've got to. If they want to survive this battle. These elves, they're, they're thirsty for orc blood. They don't care who you're fighting for. They're going to kill you. All right, some dwarven reinforcements. Guards of Khazad Doom going to the front line. Guards of Khazad Doom regrouping here. I think they're trying to get around this gap here. You can see the elves are already pushing in their their general, uh, which I think their general's right here. Look at this. I don't know if this is a specific uh, hero right here, but it's a really cool general. He's got a, his bow and arrows in the back there and his sword in his hand. That is really cool. I love it when generals really stand out. Alright, the elves got uh, some pikemen falling back here. I mean, it just seems like the elves and dwarves have so many troops, they have so many reinforcements and reserves that there's no way that the forces of Angmar can be able to cut down these guys. And I think that's what's left of the forces of Angmar. I think that's it. I think the battle's gonna come down to that. I mean, yeah, the elves are victorious over here. We do have... Oh, wait, hold the phone, guys. We got some... Some uh, goblins going to cut down these these elves who are not looking the right way. I guess they were just, I don't know, looking at some like architecture or something of the cave. I mean, they didn't hear the the horde of orcs coming uh, behind them, but I guess not. So they're actually going to lose a lot of good troops here. But we got some dwarven reinforcements to help clean out the caves here of Goblin Town. And a, a lone Mithlin noble just kind of like saying hi. Hey, what's up, dwarves? There he goes, charging in. So, all the armies are running low on E, so to speak. Here goes another dwarven force coming in. So, yeah, the dwarves and elves, man. Just untouched. It just seems like they have an endless amount of army, or, or forces, I should say. And there we go, the goblins are breaking. The goblins are breaking. And the elves stand victorious. And I'm pretty sure that's going to be the battle, guys. Uh, we do have a small resistance going on here, but really not much. I can't see a lot of goblins here. There's uh, some bodyguard moving in. Oh, this is Arnor. Sin of the Dark Cloud. He's not out yet. <laughs> so I guess technically Arnor wins. Does Arnor have any more forces? Let's see. Oh my god, look at all the dead here. This is ridiculous. Uh, no, they, they just have the general, so let's fly in here. And uh, they're just running down some of these goblins here. What's left of the goblins? So we're going to go ahead and do times two speed here, guys. Because it appears that most of the intense fighting is now over. Arnor cutting down these, these goblins. Just doing cycle charges. Uh, not too worried about fighting the elves and dwarves. They're not their enemies, you know? So yeah, that's... Why does the replay just keep going on? I don't get it. I, just, I guess they've got to kill all of the uh, the goblin forces here. Which is down to... Just a, a, a small amount. Alright guys, so there is the battle. Here's the end result. So I just went ahead and cut towards the end because it was just the elves and dwarves cutting down these random units of goblins. So this is a bloody fight, but overall the good guys 
take Goblin Town and cleanse the, the land of, of orc filth. You can see the elves doing most of the heavy lifting here, getting almost 5,000 kills. My goodness, the dwarves not really seeing too much action until the very end. So he got just under a thousand. Uh, but looking at Angmar, Angmar actually did pretty well. Uh, together they've got about 4,000, almost 5,000 kills. And then uh, the kingdom of Arnor getting uh, doing pretty well. I mean, these good factions are just so good. You know, they get a lot of kills. Uh, but if we look at the stats here of the high elves, uh, this I believe is... Uh, Whose point of view? Who is the High Elves? I forgot. But uh, this is looking at his point of view. There were so many players in this one. Uh, let's see. Who did the best? 575 by the Elven Fast Swordsman. So that's a lot of kills for a Swordsman unit. Uh, but yeah, that concludes today's battle. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I really enjoy doing battles like this one. I'm sure you guys enjoy watching it just based on the, the views and likes. So I appreciate you guys coming out, watching, and I will see you next time. Thanks, guys.